Are you, is this another show where you're going to eat the whole time? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Gotta be frozen like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we ready? Nice shirt. Thank you. Or are you talking about Mike? No, 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 no. merciful fate, dude. All right, good. All right. All right. <laughs> this is what I have to deal with, Mike. <laughs> this is fucking terrible. All right, welcome to Album versus Album. Today we have a guest on the show been a while since we've done an album versus album show by the way yeah it has yeah we have mr mike durband on the show hello mike durband hello wayne thank you for having me on it's a real honor we were uh talking about doing this for a while so oh. i'm glad to finally be on welcome mike wow did everybody did that happen to everybody <laughs> you didn't no. hear me no everybody just froze on me that oh, was really weird, weird. Let me do that over again. Well, Mike said it was an honor to be on, so yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would just take the compliment before he starts telling the truth. Or <laughs> thinking about it. Before he realizes how unprofessional we all are. <laughs> now, he already knows. Let me start this over. <laughs> exactly. It was one of the hosts who's <laughs> blazed, just munching on a cho- like a cosmic brownie. Yeah. <laughs> all right all right welcome to album versus album we are back it's been a while since we've done one of these right greg Nate? yes it has a couple what was the last one we did actually i don't even remember oh no the my Chemical romance against... one it hated. my god i i'm yearning for the days of rise against yes i am too uh we are joined with uh by mike durband by the way hello mike hello wayne uh th- <laughs> thank you for having me on it's, it's a real honor Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna have, hopefully that uh, last comment uh, recorded, and I can yeah. see what you said. <laughs> anyway, um, so I wanted to have you on the show because you had me on your show because yes. we uh, did the drums for your song or whatever, and uh, I'm still waiting for my uh, compensation, by the way. <laughs> and uh, but uh, yeah, we uh, we talked on your show, and I had a lot of fun. So I figured. Uh, <laughs> Let Nate cough in front of everybody, but uh, I figured to have you on our show, and we could do an album versus album, and uh, even though you gave me a hard time picking an album, and I kind of had to do this for you. Yes. <laughs> well, we kind of worked it out. Yeah. Uh, we did pick something. Do you want to tell us? Uh, Your tell first pick was picked? so much better. Oh, go blow me. Yeah, You'd yeah, want yeah I, uh, I got a huge issue with you... Uh... Placing my chemical romance above either one of these bands. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. I just, ugh, shut up. All right. Then you want to say what the uh-huh. album we're doing, Mike? We are doing um, Skid Row's debut album versus Slaughter. What's the Slaughter album called? Stick it, Stick Stick it, to, it you. to you. And that's also their first album, right? That is also their first okay. album. Yes, their first album as the band Slaughter. However, the whole band right. previously played together, uh, minus the new guitar player on that album as the Vinnie Vincent Invasion. Uh, Vinnie overspent his advance on the All Systems Go album. Chrysalis got pissed, fired him, and extended the next two albums on the contract to Mark Slaughter, Dana Strum, and Bobby Rock. Wow. I did not know that. I didn't either. Uh, I did, because I'm nuts for Vinnie Vincent. That's but, right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, some of the songs on Stick It To You kind of still have that vibe to it of that second Invasion album a little bit, too. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just... I have to give that one a listen. Because I'm a huge fan of this album. But um, this album was released in 1990. It sold over 2 million copies and became one of the biggest albums of 1990. you got to be kidding me. No, I'm not kidding. Oh, Fly to the Angels was huge. Oh, yeah. Up All Night went to number 27. Fly to the Angels went to 19. Uh, Spend My Life went to number 39. All charted in the top 40 Billboard magazine Hot 100. And their videos were... In solid rotation of various music television outlets, I always remember watching Slaughter videos on MTV. I think one of them even did a cameo on Full House or some stupid shit like that. Uh, 
I think the yeah, the drummer was on something. Yeah, I, I do remember something about that. Yeah, it might have been Paul yeah. S. That yeah. depresses me. Why? Because that really sucks. <laughs> like the hey, first track is one Nikki of the best Six would have done it if he could have. Uh... <laughs> and then, and then, like Eye to Eye is mediocre, but palatable and loaded gun is like okay it passes and then everything else i could barely sit through really yes really oh my god i'm so sorry to hear that the lyrics were just well see you're Lame. younger you're younger than us so you didn't grow up with this style this of, was uh, this music. lyrical style was overdone like two years before this album came out so what? Doesn't mean it's a bad album. Uh, it reminds me of Bon Jovi and Journey, and I hate those bands. Oh, so it's, it's, this is way better than Bon Jovi. Fuck Bon it Jovi. It sounds exactly like Bon Jovi, though. Okay, fuck Bon Jovi, but uh, dude, Journey was awesome. I the hate first Journey. couple jazz fusion records they did, great stuff. Those ones are a little more interesting, but this is like, this is like fucking. What's that one song? Up All Night? Uh, no. Fucking. Uh, she Wants More? Fly the Angels? Uh, Man About You? Really up sappy. All night, I, fucking... Up All Night, I actually feel like is a uh, pretty decent single from that era. It is. Fucking... Why am I uh, blanking on this? I mean, it was. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a uh, comparison. All of it reminds so, me of Don't Stop Believing and like that. Synth poppy oh, death um, leopard kind of shit. I, I kind of mm. know what you're talking about, but I can't think of what song it is. Well, anyway, yeah. uh, Mike, this is the first time you've heard this album, right? Yeah, you know what? I I can't even remember hearing an entire Slaughter song. I was never into them at all. Yeah, I was never into them. Um, yeah, they were never on my radar. I remember seeing them in like Hit Parader when I was a kid when I was in eighth grade. And whenever I'd see them in there, I'd be like, God, these guys are goofy looking. Like, I, I don't want anything to do with this stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do you feel now after you listen to this album? I feel the same. And really? Yeah, I, oh, I feel, I feel um, justified <laughs> in my decision to avoid them. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, thank God we have a tie. <laughs> <laughs> There's not any songs on here that you like at all. There was one, yeah. There was one I, I liked. I will admit that I liked this one. Which one? Um, I'm really shocked at this. It's it's probably not a, a hit one. It's Gave Me Your Heart. Yeah. Uh, that's, it, yeah. it wasn't a hit, but uh, yeah, that's uh, I like that song. Yeah, it was really catchy and poppy and... Um, but I just wish there was a different singer. I, I can't stand yes. this guy's vocals. I can't stand it. Really? I can't tell if he's a man or a transvestite. <laughs> it's like he's got a huge range. I'll give him that, but it's yeah. it's that screechy, almost cartoonish. Axel Rosie. It, but Axel was amazing. This guy no, is just Axel like Axel annoys me too. I highly Ooh. disagree on that. Ooh. I hate Axel Rose. <laughs> Axel Rose sucks. <laughs> mm. Eleven you, octaves of dying cat is not a good vocalist. <laughs> I told you they're brutal with Guns N' Roses, Mike. Yeah, good thing I love we Slash. Did. No, I fucking worship Slash. Slash is okay. fucking amazing. Okay. I love Yeah, except else for the band. fact that, you know, he's responsible for unleashing the worst guitar of all time. Which is what? Out of mine. He <laughs> hates that, really? though. So I, I know he does. I, I think it was. Either. Even he I knows it's Axel the gayest fucking song that. ever. <laughs> well, he said that it's in an interview. not even that. It's just Great. yeah, and he's a hundred percent right. It sounds bad. It's it's not musically correct. It just sounds awkward and right. Yeah, it's pretty gay. Mr. Brown <laughs> sounds a good song. No, not 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 quite yeah. as gay as Dana Strum looks and Mark Slaughter. Oh, come I, on. I'm not, dude, <laughs> you're not gay. When I, I, have you have you, you ever seen like his, his, his picture from the first? I thought that motherfucker oh, was a chick for like it, three years. Right. <laughs> sounds like a woman. 
Well, yeah, he, he doesn't sing. Like he it. just plays the bass. Oh, but still. everyone. I mean, that's the the, that's yeah. really neither here nor there. But the get the guy's first name is. They David. don't look like, he looks girl, like a woman. Uh, when I, when I found he out he was like a dude, the, I was truly shocked. <laughs> he looks like Eric Carr from Kiss. Lo- Loaded Gun bit. was okay. It was an okay song. I give it a pass. Eye to Eye was like mediocre, but it, at least it was short. And then everything else that was it's like a shit sandwich in between like <laughs> the end of the loaf on, of white bread, like the loaf ends like at least it's white bread and not like some fucking nuts and twigs bread. But yeah. like it's still a turd in between the two of them. Uh, I'd love to give you a kick in your nuts and twigs. What about you, Greg? Uh, this well kind of like the wildlife a little bit more than this one actually because that one's a little bit heavier but um it's it's an okay record it's not my favorite not the best you know slaughter was pretty much mediocre to start with i think uh vinnie vincent was the element that really made them special as the invasion there's not a question about that but they carried on okay and they did something listenable it's not as horrible as Poison or warrant is, but oh, I think it's just as bad. I I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend to somebody starting here, but if you like glam already, you'll like this record. Vinnie Vincent was kind of cool, but it's like every hair metal band has a virtual so guitar player. Yeah. So it's, yeah, pretty much. If I'm comparing him to like fucking Randy Rhodes or. Fucking, who's the guy? Okay, even Mick Mars. Mick Mars is good, mm-hmm. and I think he's better than Vinnie Vincent. Mm, no, especially in riff writing. I suppose that that's. I mean, kind of depends on what you're talking about there and what he was doing. But you, Vinnie's actually. Uh, or was, I don't know if he still is anything other than just a weirdo now, but uh, he was a instrumentalist. He actually wrote a bunch of different hit songs for people. Right. And yeah. for TV shows and all kinds of crazy shit. So uh, I definitely don't think Mick Mars is technically better than he is in any way, shape, or form. I'm thinking riff writing as well, yeah. though, because this album bored me riff-wise. Vinny isn't on this album. Yeah, Vinny was oh, long okay. gone by the time I this would came know. out. I thought you were Let's... talking about the invasion. <laughs> no. I would know. Anyway, I don't know anything about As this you can album. see, I own the fucking album. Suck. And I have loved this album since day one. When I heard Up All Night, I heard that song and I was just blown away. And I had to have this really? album. I fucking love this album. I can really? listen to this album. You gotta all the be time. fucking kidding me! Up I love night. this. I love almost every song on here. I'm, I'm. There's probably two songs on this whole thing that I don't like, and I, I still like them, but they're just not as good as the rest of them. I'm just surprised because even when I really was like getting into the deeper and more obscure stuff with glam, like I heard up all night, and I'm like, pass. No, nah, well, you know what right. it is. I was just, I was just starting to get into metal at the time, and I don't the the way the drums are. You know, obviously, I'm a drummer, so yeah. I love the sound of the drums. They're like, you know, these pounding drums, you know, and it just sounds yeah. really cool. And and I'm I'm a fan of more of like the screaming type vocalist. So Mark Slaughter was like oh, right up my alley. Oh, I'm aware. So yeah, exactly. And then you know, I like don't hate player, it. Which was it's awesome, just so. his and every particular. song was just. I, I get it. All right. He's not everybody's cup of tea. And he's he does do a little bit too high. And he actually blew his voice out from doing all this kind of singing. So right. he can't do this anymore. He sounds but, like he's um, strained himself. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He strained himself way too much. Um, but yeah, from fucking eye to eye, just it, every song on here, is just, it's just an awesome album. And I love it. It's just, it's cool 90s uh, album for me. Mm. You know, I was young. Young and dumb. I mean, come on. But still, I yeah. still I'm 40 years old and I still listen to this guy. Damn. I was listening and to it today dumb. and I still remember what? You're still dumb. This, this is your last is... fucking show. You're your fired. You're, You're fired. fired. But uh, yeah, no, it, it brought back a lot of memories listening to this uh, slaughter. Don't uh, stick it to you. Cool shit. 
I even bought the remastered version. It has extra bonus tracks on it. See how much I love this album? Uh, so yeah. I think that's the same. You guys one are I entitled have. to your opinion, and I'm sorry nobody liked it that much. But it is what it is. Well, and you want to put it up against one of the best hair metal albums ever, which is what Skid Row's debut album. Well, let's. I beg, I beg to differ on that one, but uh, let's segue. Who wants to? Uh, who wants to start with that one? I fucking love this album. Do you? Sebastian well, Bach is doing go. everything Mark Slaughter is trying to do, but about ten times better. Yep. Yeah, he's not straining himself <laughs> at all. He's hitting everything perfectly. The hits are better on this. Youth Gone Wild is great. Eighteen and Life is actually a good ballad. You couldn't, I couldn't pay for a good ballad from Slaughter. I remember you is even tolerable. Flight to the Angels was an awesome ballad. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. No. Yeah, it was. I do like Flight of the Angels. I'll give you that one. But I mean, Big Guns is great. Fucking Rattlesnake Shake is heavy. I like that. Making a Mess is all right. Midnight Tornado was my favorite. That's fucking awesome. Midnight Tornado. (laughs) 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 Who wants to go? Is that you done now? I mean, for now, I guess. <laughs> All right. I lost uh, my train of thought. What about what about you, Mike? I actually love their second album. Uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite albums of all time, Slave to the Grind. So I think that's, that's a great w- album too. Yeah, that's way better than their first album. But I still this this is a great debut album. It's it's pretty pretty fucking good. Um, Midnight Tornado is probably the only one I don't love, but it's it's still good. But uh, the other ten songs, I think, are phenomenal. The vocal solo at the end is what did it for me. The vocal? Which solo? Like, the vocal solo at the end of Midnight Tornado. Oh. Yeah. That's what did it for me. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Were you? Yeah. Because I yeah, his... this album in, like, a long time. Yeah. His His vocals, I mean, at that point in his career, a young Sebastian Bach... It's it was just probably effortless for him, you know. Oh yeah. I mean, his range. You, I don't think you can top this guy. Sebastian Bach in his prime, flawless, you know. And he's he's probably blown his voice out too. I mean, he's definitely he doesn't oh, yeah. sound the same anymore. But he does okay though. Yeah, he does okay. Yeah. He does better than like Axl Rose, modern day Axl Rose. Or does, Brett you know? Michaels. Yeah, Brett Michaels is okay. I don't. He. I mean, he was never spectacular to begin with. So. Right. I guess. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think th- at this point in Sebastian's career, I mean, he was probably, uh, I don't even think he was 18 when they first found him, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, the songs are great. Um, who, who uh, Rachel, <coughs> Rachel Bolin and Snake Sabo, they, I think they wrote most of them. Yeah, just the, just the two of them. So. Yeah. The riffs are great. The riffs yeah. on this are fucking catchy. Yeah, and it's not the same riff for the whole damn song. Yeah, and and if you if you take apart all these songs, there's always two different distinct guitar uh, riffs going on. Like Scotty and and Snake, they just play so well together. They're never playing the same thing. Uh, they're just it's fucking amazing, man. All of them. It's absolutely kick ass. Yeah. This album peaked at number six at the Billboard 200 and was certified five times platinum. Nice. I didn't know that. Yeah. Fucking deserves it. Yeah. It generated four singles: "Youth Gone Wild," "18 in Life," "I Remember You," and "Piece of Me," which I don't remember that one. So I guess it really wasn't a bigger hit. Yeah, "Piece of Me." There was That's a video. That was I like it. I mean, I think "Piece of Me" is like a really tough song. Like it's dangerous. Like Slaughter, they look like a bunch of, um, <laughs> you know, they, they look, look like, like a bunch of women. Yeah, no, they look like you know a bunch of twelve-year-old girls who would, would really be into them. Um, RuPaul's Drag Race over here. <laughs> what? I, we gotta get you, you a fucking mute button. Do you, you have to fucking do that while we're doing the show. Can you have some decency, especially but, uh, if we have a fucking guest on? For Christ's sakes, uh, Mike. Rude. Uh, you're not perfect like example that. of uh, the image thing you're talking about, though. So, in I and I can't remember what video because it's been so long since I've seen the Skid Row videos. But you know, in 18 in life, or I remember you. It might have been a ballad, but they at least had the decency to wear denim 
and leather. You know, there's a scene in the Up All Night video where Mark Slaughter is wearing hot pants and pink rollerblades. Enough said. <laughs> no, that was one of the women. <laughs> no, no, sir. That was Mark. And then Blue Oyster Bar looking MTV, ass. He, he, he talked about how much he liked rollerblading. So, you know. Oh, I'll have to rewatch that video because I don't recall that at all. It's it's in one. It might not be up all night, but it's in Flight of the Angels or something. He, it definitely is not in Flight of the Angels. That is where they're in the uh, the, um, the what do you call that thing where the planes go um, like uh, hangar. Hell you call it? Hangar. Yes, thank you. Yes, it is in the hangar. Welcome to our fortress. Now I'll take some time to show you wrap. Nice. We're not talking about Megadeth. What do you think about uh, Skid Row? Uh, to, well, definitely the better album. <laughs> Wrong again. Uh, but uh, it's a classic. Um, really, there isn't a song I dislike off of it. I skip the ballads now just because I've heard them so much over the years. I never need to hear I Remember You Again, but it's still a great song. But that, And that's really why I listen to Slave to the Grind more is just because it hasn't been played to death. Yeah, but um, right. great, great guitar work on this. Great guitar team, and uh, Sebastian Bach at this point in his life, you know, he was young. He was pre- uh, just an amazing vocalist. I meant to say fresh, but I got tripped up. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, definite uh, ten out of ten on Skid Row's first album. You know, whereas. Slaughter's first record, I kind of feel like represented all the excesses and what was too much right. about the glam movement and why it was on its way out. Skid Row represented a fresh take on it while still retaining some of those elements like the power ballad. Hmm. Well, this is the first Skid Row album I listened to all the way through. I really never listened to Skid Row before. Really? Until, yes. Until, uh, like, last year, I start for some reason, I all of a sudden started listening to uh, 18 and Life. I just wanted to hear that song, and then uh, I've been listening to that. I've actually been listening to the last, the, the, th- the three singles, the 18 and Life and the uh, Youth Gone Wild and um, I Remember You. And uh, I've been actually getting into those songs. I didn't like them back when they first came out, because... I don't know, the 18 Life video disturbed me for some reason. I guess because I was young, and it just scared the shit out of me. I don't know, the guy was shooting people, and he was going That's to jail. That's what I like about crap. that. Now it's a different story. I, I, I'm, you know, I would like it, but uh, back then when I was a kid, I, I was scared of all that shit. And it just, I don't know, it weirded me out, that whole video. Because uh, I was like, shit, I'm going to turn 18, I'm going to go to jail. <laughs> it just, I don't know, it was weird, stupid. I was an idiot. I was a all kid. right. Yeah. Youth Gone Wild has been on my workout playlist for, like... Yeah. 10,000 years. It's great. Yeah, well, I'm just getting used to it now. This guy's got to show off his diamond head collection like anybody cares. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I have to show a real awesome debut album. Yeah, you you know. Nobody but... <laughs> cares about your 7 out of 10 new album band. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. I don't know. This, this, Skid Row, this Skid Row album, it's okay. <clears throat> it, I don't like it as much as I like the Slaughter album at all. It's not as catchy to me. I like catchy choruses and things like that. And I just don't hear that many, many catchy choruses in this Skid Row album at all. And it, it oh is, my God, uh, You've Gone Wild is catchier than that is, anything okay. mm. I, I, miss, I miss said that. Uh, those three songs that became singles, those are catchy choruses. The rest of the songs on the album don't have those same catchiness that the, those songs did. You know what I'm saying? I like I just I don't hear it in in the other songs, and I'm surprised that the album did as good as it did because I just don't I don't see it. I was coming <laughs> along the sweet little sister. And, I thought that was pretty catchy. Yeah. But listen, listening to this is I, I just realized why I really never listened to Skid Row because I don't like all their songs. Have you and ever was, listened to Slave to the Grind? No. It's a lot but, heavier. It's it's a it's almost a different band. It's a really heavy yeah. album. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why didn't you tell me to pick that instead? Well, I thought we were going debut versus debut. Album, it didn't so. really matter. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it actually would have worked either way because Slaughter tried to heavy it up on the wildlife. So, oh. Actually, I think they lightened yeah. it up on the wildlife. See, I think they did it backwards. 
Maybe I'm thinking of they the changed third the, album. Uh, it's been a long time since I listened to. They changed the like the whole record. sound, like like that first Slaughter album had, like I said, with the, the really heavy drums, and then on the second one they like I don't know what the hell they did, but they just like made it like really uh, sound boxy. It just sounded weird. I really I honestly wonder how many of that, how how much of that might have started off as backing tracks for Invasion songs. It's possible. I don't know. But that second album sounded like a demo almost to me. But uh, yeah, the Skid Row, I mean, it's cool. I, I like to hear Sebastian Bach because I, I, I actually do like Sebastian Bach. Oh, and the other thing was, was when I the Skid Row album, a lot of it reminded me of like um, 80s Kiss because I know Sebastian Bach is a, a huge Kiss fan. And I can hear a lot of Kiss in these songs. Like a lot of Gene yeah. Simmons stuff, like from Asylum or even from um, uh, Lick It Up era. I can hear a lot of that stuff in this album. That's why I, I heard it anyway. But uh, as far as really liking, because I, I really don't like that that era of Kiss, and and that's why I kind of don't like this era, of, uh, this Skid Row album, because it just kind of reminds me. I of don't that. know. Slave to the Grind is completely different. It's like a I'll lost have to album. Give that a try. I'll have to give that a try. Or I do like Twisted Lost. Sisters Under the Blade. It's a lot more like that, where it's heavier. Yeah. Uh huh. I'll, I'll give it a try. I figured this one was going to be a better one because I had all the three hits on there, so that was wrong for me. <sighs> but uh, all right, so what do we I give think, it? I think "Slave to the Grind" it it hit when it came out. It, it I think it was a huge Billboard hit like the first week. Yeah. For somehow I don't know what the big single was off that, but I remember that it Quick went really Jesus, well. I think the first single. I don't think it was that was first. I don't think so. I think uh, it might have been "Monkey see. Business." Yeah, yeah, it was Monkey Business. Okay. Yep. How does that song go? I never even heard it. Somebody you had to have heard it. And then. Uh, monkey Business. I don't remember the rest of no. it, but that's the basic gist. Did you watch <laughs> Headbangers Ball back in the day? Of course. This was always on, man. It's it's. Yeah, I think it's black and white. It's Sebastian, or one of them is beating the, a mannequin. I think. Uh, Maybe I that's something else. Thanks. Well, I don't know. I can't Maybe remember, not. but you're. You're right. The video was on all the time. So you know, I, I always recorded Headbangers Ball, and when some videos came out, like especially Skid Row or bands that I didn't like, I fast forward. forward. So yeah. I probably seen it, just don't remember it. But uh, all right. So what are we giving these albums? What, we'll start with Slaughter. Uh, Nate, what do you want to give Slaughter? As if I don't already know. Yeah. Big fat zero. Yeah, I like to slit your throat too. What about you, Mike? Is it out of ten? Uh, yes, zero through ten. Zero through ten, I'm gonna give it a two. A two? Yeah. This is the last time you're ever coming on this show, Mike. Uh, I, I like that. I like that one song. I may even download that one song and uh, add that to some <laughs> playlist because I did. I did enjoy that one song. Yeah. So it's both me and Mike's last appearance. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Greg? Yeah, I give it about a four and a half, five. That's average, I guess. All right, I'll accept that. And I'll, I will give it a... I'm going to give it an 8. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, it, bring it brings back a lot of memories for me. I love this album. And, and Mike, you're chewing on the He-Man sword. Yeah. Why? It's, it's actually <laughs> Prince Adam's sword. It's the, the oh, yeah. Oh, yes, it is Prince Adam's. <laughs> Adam. Prince Adam's you, by day, you... Chippendale by night. <laughs> Are you? Do you collect He-Man figures? Yeah, I do. You do? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Got this one sitting on the desk. Oh, is that oh, the cool. uh, uh, what is it? Super, not Super Seven. Um, what's the other one? The other company? Is it Super Seven? No, this oh, was huh? um, the commemorative reissue from two thousand two, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's pretty much this almost the exact same as the original one. What's that other company that makes that's make like reissues those? Yeah. Yeah. You you were right. It, it is Super Seven. It is Super Seven. Right? Yeah. Did you see the uh, the Castle Grayskull that they put out? Yeah, yep. It's like life size. <laughs> yeah, they're coming out with a Snake Mountain one in a couple months. It's like it was like six hundred dollars for the Snake Mountain. Yeah, that's insane. Are yeah. you buying? Are you gonna yeah. get it? Nope. No. nope. <laughs> you had to you had to put the money down in advance to pre-order. Right. Yeah. It, so yeah, yeah I, I didn't didn't buy it. So. Man, it's, I have the original. Oh it's only, wow! It's only about like what this big or something like that. It's not very big. Yeah. Yeah, it's about. Two and a half feet, or yeah, so. it's not that tall. But I I used to have everything. I even yeah. had a turnia, but I sold it all. 
Wow, Eternia, man. If you still had that, that's worth a lot of money now. I well, I mean, you know, it was only like three years ago I sold it. I got like seven hundred and fifty bucks for it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um the the only thing I kept because he's my favorite is Scareglow. <laughs> yeah, I never had that I never had that one. He was a glow in the dark um skeleton guy with a pink or a pur- yeah. purple cape, I think. He I had a purple skeleton. cape, oh, and uh, if you if you had the very first one, which, which I did, he had a glow in the dark axe, and mm-hmm. the other ones after that came with a green one. Or technically, it's a Hal bread, but whatever. Hal uh, bread, yeah. Um, yeah, but that was. Uh, I don't think he was ever in the cartoon. He was only in the comics. Yeah. Okay. But it was just some evil spirit from Snake Mountain that. Skeletor could make take a human form and oh. fight He Man. Or the uh, skunk guy. Stinkor? Yep. Yes, Stinkor. Yes. Yep. Uh, I still I... have they're, uh, they're coming out with a new line in the fall. Mattel is making them, and they're based on the the, the toys. They look similar, but they got more, um, what's it called? Joints articulation. And stuff. Yeah, more articulation. And they're coming out. They're going to have a lot of them, man. They're yeah. not just like you know on sale online. Like they're going to be in stores. It's going to be a really? pretty big. Yeah, it's it's going to be pretty big. So I hope it does well. What's what's with cool. all the resurrection of this stuff? Is there is that movie ever going to come out? Like a, I knew they were working on something. Yeah, I mean it's like every month they have it's a new movie. update. Like it's mm-hmm. like oh it's going to Netflix or no it's going to be in the theaters and then now, now it's back to Netflix. So well, who's both like buff and flamboyant enough to play He Man? They cast a guy, they cast a young actor about a year ago, and um, the fan base was not happy. Some guy named Noah Centino, I think. And he's got dark hair, and he's kind of, um, I mean, he's... He looked like, he looked like a child, almost. No, yeah. He-Man, He-Man needs to be just a giant, buff, gay guy. It's There's nothing <laughs> There's nothing else that works for He-Man. With, for with bangs. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, if he doesn't look like a power bottom... <laughs> he should have been doing it right. Yeah. yeah. Right. It should have been, been Chris Hem uh, Thor. Chris, Chris Hemsworth. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He would have been awesome. You know. Yeah. He could pass. Yeah. Especially with like how comedic Thor is now. Yeah. Yeah. He could totally do he man. Yeah. All right. Uh, back to the show. Uh, Skid Row, the self-titled debut. What are we giving Skid Row? Eight. An eight. All right. What about you, Greg? Eight. Jesus Christ! I guess I know who won on this episode, Mike. Uh, I will also. Do, we got triple eights, man. Triple eights! Holy yeah. shit! I will give it a five. You well, ruined the jackpot, Wayne. I, I I just could not give that an eight. I can't. I can't. I, I don't have it in me. <laughs> I gave all my eights away to slaughter. Sorry. <laughs> hey, like Les Claypool once said, it's just a matter of opinion. That's all it is. And that's what's so good about Rat Salad Review. Don't take any of our opinions seriously. Is, Le- is Les Claypool the dude? He's the dude. But uh, No, Les himself. Claypool is the bass player from Primus. I, no, I know, I know. Oh. It's just like your opinion, man. Uh, yeah, no, it's a- actually, it's just a matter of opinion is... Uh, the first line of the chorus from a song called The Pressman, which is on 1993's album Pork Soda. That's right. Buy right. it, tell a friend. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened to Slaughter? I mean, they put out the first album in 90. When was the next one after that? Um, shit, I don't know. I have to look up. Uh, uh, the Wildlife, I think, came out in 92. Okay. <clears throat> And then and grunge then, then grunge came in and what happened how did they weather the storm did they they break? continued yeah uh, 92 was wildlife and then yes the grunge era came and then they released the best of i have all their albums uh, and then they they like disappeared and they they came out with an album called fear no evil but it went on i don't know if you remember the cmc international mm-hmm. record label. A lot, a lot of bands like Overkill. Um, Where like, bands go to die. <laughs> yeah, basically, Should've they been all went their, to that uh, label. Slogan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So they released an album on that record label. That was in '95. 
And then they released another one in 97. And then they did a live album. And then in 1999, they released, I believe it's the last album, Back to Reality. And then after that, their guitarist, um, I believe, died in a car accident. Really? Yeah. That oh, sounds it about right. What was it but before that, actually? The original did... guitarist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was his name? Um, fuck. Jeff... No, not Jeff Blando. I'm drawing a blank right now. Actually, no. He died actually before that album came out. He died uh, after Revolution album came out. Uh, and his name was... Tim Kelly. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it was a car accident. Yeah, 98 he died. Yep, car accident. Shortly after the release of the Eternal Live album. Yeah. Hmm. Yep, so that pretty much like... Uh, <laughs> That's kind of ironic. I mean, I really <laughs> shouldn't be laughing because he died, but still. <laughs> oh, yeah, real funny, Greg. Nice. But uh, yeah, they they do show up every once in a while on like um, like little festivals here and there. So they they still they're still kind of around, I guess. Coming to a like casino it. near you. Pretty much. That's what yeah. they do. Next year on 70,000 70, Tons of Metal Cruise. And actually, no, 70,000 Tons is a great Crocus. lineup usually. Like, Exodus played like three headliner shows on year. I think it was last year. This year. Mark Porter, he does. Well, uh, what I, whatever. There's a glam cruise. I don't remember played. what it's called. No, that's I Monsters really of Rock. Monsters okay. of Rock Cruise just had a great line on it. I can't find it. But uh, Mark Slaughter does voiceovers for some cartoon. I can't think of what cartoon it is. But that's what he's doing now. Co- uh, Metalocalypse. <laughs> no, it's not Metalocalypse. It's something on like Adult Swim or something, I think. I'm just fucking... Which crazy. is where Metalocalypse was on Adult right, Swim, yes. but... but no, it'd be funny if they got Mark Slaughter to narrate the death metal show. Yeah, and Skid Row's still around. And actually, now Skid Row has the vocalist from uh, Dragon Force. Yeah, yeah. and he's actually he's, not too bad. And Sebastian Bach is doing this album in its entirety on his next tour. Yes, he is. Yeah. Mm. So I guess that's it, and we know who the winner is Skid Row. So, yeah, I mean. The Skid Row's one a glam album I will still revisit. There isn't much from the glam era where, even though I grew up listening to some of it, that I think has aged very well at all. No, I'm not a huge fan of that era. But uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on, Mike. I hope you had some fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I Come found on. you know I found one good song out of it. So. You found one good song. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was worth it. That was worth maybe, it. Maybe next time. Maybe next time we'll do the Guns and Roses. Because we were supposed to do Guns and Roses. Uh, appetite for destruction. So maybe we'll do that one next time, and then you can pick another one that could fit with that. Yeah. I don't know, or, man. Nothing, nothing can match up against that. There one. isn't. That's uh, that's it's. I it's wanted a tough to one. do. Well, fed by Prague here's a better debut album. album right here. I'll stop it, please. Diamond Head beats the shit out of Guns N' Roses. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, you're right. It is a good album. <laughs> but, uh, or maybe we could just do like a Guns N' Roses Appetite for Destruction show. I'd, I'd like to hear well, what these guys have to I, say about that. We're not doing mean, it. We've already been, went all the time. Please. There's so a. Just, um, what? Not necessarily directly from 87, but there, there is some other stuff around that era where it doesn't exactly have the immediacy of Appetite for Destruction. But like I feel like you could play something, put something up against it, like the Dogs Diamore burnout at the Dynamite Jet Saloon. I guess. But when we did the Fast of P- uh, Pussycat uh, show, I felt they w- would go along very well with uh, Guns N' Roses. Or yeah. speak by again. Mm-hmm. What? But I'm not fan of them. No, I met with Faster Pussycat. That that would make sense. Yeah, they're very. Very similar in sound. But anyway, uh, Mike, where can people listen to your show? Uh, you can find the Mike Durban Show on the Creative Control Network. Um, let's see. May, I, I think I'm going to go every other week now. I was doing a show every week, but now I think I'm going to do two a, two a month. Um, I don't you know. Too much? Too much, yeah. yeah. Too much, yeah. You know how many shows we do, Mike? 
How many? A lot. Like, like five. <laughs> five a week? Uh, kind of, yes, almost. Well, you guys got Not different, me. you know, there's three of you. You guys can bounce ideas off. It's like me, I'm just on my mm. own, so, yeah. It's not really how it works. It's it's me saying we're going to do this, and they just agree and go like okay. this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're protesting. <laughs> yep. so we're right coming now. up with a better right idea. Now. I got to go. But yeah, he's, for he's... coming on, Mike. All right, hurry up before you uh, don't make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, tell us more, Mike. Where are you? Where can we hear you? Uh, the Mike Durban Show on Creative Control, and then on Twitter, you can find me at Mike Durban, D U R B A N D, and on YouTube, uh, Michael Durban. It's um, YouTube.com slash Michael Durban, and I have a lot of I have hundreds of videos up there. Yeah. Uh, different interviews I've done, uh, <coughs> just a, just a bunch of stuff. So yeah, yeah, you have a lot of a lot of a um, lot of shows and stuff. They're very good. I always listen to your show. So and Thanks. I'm not lying, people. I do listen to a show. <laughs> so go check that out. And um, yeah, go listen to these albums. Judge for yourself. Let us know what you think in the comments about these two albums. Do you like Slaughter better? Do you like Skid Row better? Let us know. All right. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Oh, and go buy a shirt, please. Go on our website, ratsoundreview.com, and go buy a shirt. I got tons of different designs up there. You can pick through anything. Very cheap, 15 bucks. All right? Except for the two-sided shirt. I think that's like 20 or something. But still, not a lot of money. So uh, check Support it out. Support your local scene. That's right. Help <laughs> us, uh, help us pay for our, our, uh, our bills for the podcast and the website and all that crap. And uh, Hard to our boss. And yeah, and pay pay for uh, Nate's brownies, but uh, yeah, ratsoundreview.com, and I believe our thing is on storefrontier.com. You just search Ratsound Review, you will find our stuff, and uh, check out all of our shows. All right, and subscribe, please subscribe. We are now on Podbean.com, so please subscribe to Podbean. Leave some comments, subscribe to YouTube, and that's all I gotta say. See you guys next time. Adios. Goodbye.